is the real deal. You're lucky I'm even talking to you. What? It's all good, man. Hello, guys. Welcome back. To my reaction channel today we're going to be reacting to better call soul season 3 episode 3 now guys in the last episode Saul dig his own grave and uh, chuck pretty much has two witnesses catching him breaking and entering and threatening chuck with violence and all that he can be charged with a, a lot of things and he's probably gonna be because chuck's a piece of shit right so Saul kind of did himself in right and also we finally saw gus and looks like mike and gus are gonna meet each other and i'm here for it that being said enjoy my reactions you know what to do let's go come on baby oh los pues hermanos let's go it's around gus oh they're falling huh the shoelace is broke. I do not wish to see your gun. And if I don't, I promise you won't see mine. Okay. Are we in agreement? We are. Expect two cars momentarily. Ooh, this was a trap. So is Gus with him? Or are these just lackeys? Oh my god, Gus is here, bro. He's not playing any games. He's not wasting any time. He wants to meet Mike and he's probably gonna implore him because, yo, Mike found him, right? He had so little to go on and yet he found a way to track him to Los Poyos Hermanos. And I think Gus is gonna find that endearing and, right, interesting. So, yeah, so this is how Mike... Th this was pretty much Mike's resume. <laughs> okay, I, I love it. But how are you just... Go how are you casually gonna have a meeting... Of this magnitude and the and the literally uh, it's not a highway but it's an open road. I know it's not that busy, but they just closed the the, the road, parked in the middle of it. You had let it go. You'd taken his money. Your family was no longer in danger. True. And yet, still, you robbed his truck. Shouldn't that have settled the matter? Most men would have walked away. However, I am not completely unsympathetic to your sense of justice. <laughs> you hurt Hector when you robbed that truck. You hurt his business. Yeah, this is interesting because we know Gus hates, despises Hector because Hector killed him. Uh, not him, his partner right in front of Gus and, and humiliated him and made a fool out of him. So he hates Hector with a passion. And yet he's protecting Hector. I guess he has a lot of pressure from the cartel, but still. His pride. Quite effectively. Goodbye, Mr. Ermentrout. Okay. Why? Is he gonna ask for a job? You want his truck set because you want to disrupt his supply line. Hector's your competition. So he might as well wait. Also, you guys told me that his secretary you know here right inside. is the same one in Breaking Bad. So that's a double detail. You won't want to hear it, but this is for the best. Shut the hell up, man. Please, Jimmy. He could have gotten you committed if he wanted to. But Jimmy, this is an opportunity. That's why I'm doing this, not to punish you. Yeah, it is to punish him, bro. If you really wanted to help him, you could have made an intervention or some shiz, bro. And it's not... Man, Chuck is a... Bro, what a shitty brother to have, man. Like, that's your brother, your blood, your only blood. Both your parents are dead. To show you, truly show you that you have to make a change. Right. Now, Jimmy's a badass for waiting for the cops, bro. My man was like, ah, the hell with it. Might as well get this over with. <laughs> the hell? I thought they were bullshitting me. How the mighty have fallen. What the hell happened, man? <laughs> Nothing. Just family trouble. You're married? No. Disagreement with my brother. Don't represent yourself. I don't care how good you are as a lawyer or whatever. Never represent yourself. It comes off as not good. Just get a lawyer, bro. <laughs> and he has Kim. Kim would have been sympathetic to the judge. 
right? But nah, yeah, he's gonna be stubborn and. Hey, speaking of, they uh, still trying to replace you over there? How's uh, Omar? Why, are you looking to make a change? Okay, show dominance. Right, got it, dominance. You uh, do know how to throw a punch, right? Yeah, all right, goodbye. Bro, I know you ain't talking with that haircut, bro. With that hairline. Yeah, I don't do any of this, I just take a shower and go. <laughs> Yep, he's in jail. Ernie has ashy elbows, by the way. I think I'm right. <laughs> you should put some lotion on. Okay. He's not the smallest guy, so that's good. <laughs> We've also got petty misdemeanor assault, maximum six months jail time and a $500 fine, plus criminal damage to property. Also misdemeanor with a maximum sentence of six months and a $500 fine. Victim is... Your brother. Your brother, Charles. Oh, Your Honor, I'm all set. I'm gonna represent myself. Your Honor. Not your client, Ms. Wexler. I'm sorry, I'm moving on. You two can work this out on your own time. I'm sorry I was gonna call you, but then I thought I'd tell you in person. Mr. McGill. Chuck played me like a fiddle. And schmuck that I am, I fell for it. Mora. <laughs> I will fix this myself, me, Jimmy McGill. Yeah, but you made this happen, bro. That's probably gonna be her point of view. And that was Chuck's point of view too. Cause Chuck didn't force you to do anything. You did it on your own without asking Kim for advice. And now you jeopardize everything you just said. You're the one who jeopardized it, not Chuck. Sure, Chuck is petty, he's a piece of shit, but you gave him the opportunity to screw you over and by default, Kim as well. Okay, you have gotta let me do this on my own. He entered the plea of not guilty. How is he gonna defend that plea, bro? Because they have witnesses and he did do it. So what, what's his defense gonna be? I'm curious. Now, I love how he included the mother too, right? He didn't take it upon himself to, to give the child candy. He was like, yo, you need to learn to respect authority, which is your mother. Right? And in this instance, he included her into this, the decision making and she approved it. That's why he got the candy. That's a dope way to approach a child, somebody else's child, right? Yeah, yeah I, I like that approach. I mean, okay, I guess he has a task to do for Gus. This is his lunch break. Happy to have a civil conversation and I'm always ready to make a deal. Just call me Monty Hall. So you're looking to plea out on this then, Monty? If it's the right plea. Something hay, I think. Huh. I don't know, boss used the words tough but fair. <clears throat> I love how nobody never passes when he's doing things like this. <laughs> so why did he do it? What does that accomplish? I guess he left the product to somebody. How are they gonna get it down? A lot of questions. That I'm sure they'll answer, but... Did he strike you? No. <laughs> Nothing like that. He backed me into a cabinet. Did he have a weapon? Well, as I mentioned, he used a fireplace poker to break into my desk. But he never would have used it on me. Did you feel physically threatened? My brother is a lot of things, but even he has limits. I'll get started on this. Uh, unless you have other concerns. I just... I just keep thinking... What? You know, Jimmy has a good heart. I'm, I'm sure he does. He gonna... Rob yet another Hector Salamanca truck? For Gus? They're gonna blow out the tires or something. But... Bro, 
what? Quizás son castigadores. Oh. So they're gonna cross the border, and the dog is gonna smell the cocaine. I assume that he just and the shots before that was so they don't get suspicious when he actually shoots down through the sneakers. Okay, that was actually smart. And Gas is definitely promoting Mike. <laughs> but yeah, Jimmy is in trouble. Because that prosecutor, she's not gonna let him drop the felony down to a misdemeanor. A PPD. <sighs> That's great, Jimmy. It <sighs> Best I could hope for, right? Right. So that's... What does she want you to confess to? All of it. Felony, B&E. What's his game? One condition of the PPD is that my written confession is immediately submitted to the New Mexico Bar Association. Your written oh. felony confession. Yeah, I thought he wanted me in jail. He just wants my law license. Piece of shit. You need me. <laughs> you can't argue this yourself. She's you right. You both know that, and I'm not going to let you fight this on your own. Come on, don't be stubborn. Are you sure? Yeah. They're a cute couple. Now? now, now we uh, take that PPD and we shove it right up Chuck's ass. Yep, he's not gonna take the deal, Brian. That, that was one crazy ass deal. Chuck is really petty as hell. He's really, he's actually jealous that uh, Jimmy managed to accomplish something that is pretty much chuck's whole character and life right a lawyer he's a lawyer right and he takes great pride in that and then jimmy by cutting corners managed to right completely catch up to him pass the bar and, and become a lawyer and that's literally a thorn in, in chuck's eyes and he can't handle it so now he's boxing him in and just making sure he understands i don't want you in jail i just want your bar license bro I don't want you to be a lawyer. I want you beneath me. Crazy, right? Imagine your brother doing that to you. I mean, I, I, listen, I, I'm not saying Jimmy's completely not in fault here. He did make him seem like a fool in that Mesa Verde case, right? And then, of course, he did break and enter and all that. But come on, it's a petty dispute between brothers, bro. If I broke in into my sister's home, sure, she would scream her lungs out at me, but she, she would probably just make me buy the new door. <laughs> She's not gonna send me to jail, bro. We're family. So that's kind of crazy. That That's a crazy-ass relationship right there. But, I mean, okay. If, if Kim and Jimmy are gonna fight it, then maybe he has a shot. But not guilty? With two witnesses and property damage and all that? Yeah, that's gonna be a tough one to, to beat. But maybe he can get, get it down to misdemeanor, right? That being said, today we're going to react to Better Call of Saul Season 3 Episode 4. Now guys, in the last episode, Jimmy is facing disbarment and jail time. He accepted Kim's help. Now they're both gonna they're both gonna defend Jimmy against his diabolical brother and the prosecutor. And uh, Mike is apparently working with Gus now. And uh, he did well because those guys got arrested and I'm here for it, bro. <laughs> that being said, if you enjoy my reactions, you know what to do. Let's go. Yo, these episodes slap. We're getting everything before Breaking Bad. They're connecting every dot. Oh, this is the cartel boss. Pero con este tienes que tener cuidado. Que es portarte bien. Porque él no da una segunda oportunidad. Yeah. Hey, bolsa. Chico de la chingada. Radio, qué gusto verlo, eh. Está bien, está bien. Wow. Gustavo le manda saludos. Damn. Todo esto en solo un mes. Él es un genio de la distribución. Héctor, estás muy serio, muy serio. Somos todos amigos aquí. Vamos, que hay mucho business que hacer en el norte. Vengan. No lo insultes. I popped this house. 
It's good? It's great. Kaylee loves her new school. The neighborhood's friendly. We feel safe. That's good. You'll have to respect that. Nacho. Where was he the entirety of Breaking Bad, bro? Did he die in this show? Before Breaking Bad? <laughs> okay. You, you don't have to do that. I'd be happy to take a message. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Fring wouldn't want to keep you waiting. Uh, bro, they're very suspicious. Like, each of them standing on the opposite sides of the room and they all entered right simultaneously it's obvious this guy's a boss he's just gonna smoke in here around food bro that's not sanitary hector is making a scene to prove a point right he's like uh, you might you might have it good with don eladio but i don't like you and like right he's trying to flex on gus look at uh, him excuse me sir you can't light that in here sir there's Bruh. no smoking on the premises Damn. Everybody's afraid. Okay, that's hilarious. My man is endorsing the police and all that, doing his regular routine, right? And his place is being bombarded by the cartel right now, and they're flexing all over the customers and traumatizing them. They're never going to come back, right? It's bad for business, bad for him being down low, low key, right? Hector, damn, bro. Hector <laughs> is tripping. Gus. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, gentlemen, ladies, uh, I, I hope to never need your services. Bro, Hector is an idiot. Mr. Fring, you sure you want to be left with these guys? I'm fine, bro. You go home. Should I call someone? No. <laughs> that will not be necessary, truly. You sure? The disrespect. I understand that your supply line has been compromised. And this is most unfortunate. Hmm. I approve this. So I'm trying to understand the chain of command here, right? Don Eladio is obviously on top, but Salamanca doesn't seem to be at all worried about him. In fact, he seems to be pretending that he's in charge. It's like they're both heads of the family. I, I guess they are. Like, he's the head of the Salamanca family and Eladio is the head of his family. Maybe all the families, right? Like, the main family. But regardless, yo, my man is tripping. He's really tripping. Oh, he's gonna throw it. Woohoo! Swoosh. He seems to be pleased with himself. Maybe he wanted this to happen. Because we do know Gus is calculated like that. Yeah, now he's gonna be awkward as hell at work. Because everybody saw what happened last night, like, right? How do you explain that? Many years ago, I opened my first Los Pollos Hermanos in Michoacan. Shortly thereafter, those same men showed up. They wanted money. Here, those men have no power. And when they saw that I had no fear of them, they ran, like the cowards they are, back across the border. Okay, I thought it was you guys. Guess I was wrong. Thanks anyway. What is she doing? Hi, I'm calling about an appointment for Charles McGill. Well, that's why I'm calling. <laughs> I think it's for this week, but good thing my head's attached to my neck, right? You know what's interesting? I just was thinking about the case and Chuck pressing charges against Jimmy and all that. Imagine something happens to Chuck again, right? His mental illness makes him catatonic again and then Jimmy gets temporary ownership, right? He can get him committed and also drop charges against himself. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious, right? <laughs> oh, poor Frisky. Pomeranians can be difficult. Martin's repair. Yeah, Mr. McGill. Good afternoon. If you don't mind wiping your shoes. Yo, it's Mike. 
Bro, what is Jimmy doing? He doesn't like batteries either. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I understood there would be no power tools of any kind. What, a screwdriver and a hammer? Turns a morning job into two days with me, myself, and Ben Gay. But it, it's your call. <clears throat> what is Jimmy planning? Right, so that's literally that's why they made all those calls to see who he called so mike can disguise as a worker in that shop and come here and infiltrate and but what, what is he gonna get right maybe the tape but surely he already handed that over to the police so then again no it's not admissible in court but i don't know bro i don't know what's going on but something's definitely happening let's go Museum quality. You, my friend, are the Ansel Adams of covert photography. So what? Did he need evidence to prove that Chuck's insane? Like that he's losing it? Maybe he's gonna argue that 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 Chuck is not in any capacity to right sue anybody, and maybe he's gonna try and spin it, right? And that other thing. Thank you. Nice to fix something for once. Yeah! He didn't have to break well, legs. That's how you feel. I got a leaky toilet back at the office. Right. What I did, I didn't do for you. The man. Interesting. The one killed for helping the truck driver. If I may make an observation, perhaps in the future, you will consider working for me. Here we go. Make the deal with the devil. Jimmy? Shut up, prick. <laughs> I had an aunt. She's no longer with us. She went to church every Sunday, but... When the boys choir sang, she would absolutely have to leave. Something about the frequency of their voices really did a number on her. Well, that is a shame. Indeed. <laughs> All right. He damaged the victim's property. Would it not be more accurate to say destroyed a cassette tape? I'm sorry, wasn't the cassette tape his property? Of course it was. Then it seems entirely accurate to say he damaged the victim's property. Why be vague? And damaged doesn't reflect its irrevocable condition. Fine. Damaged property belonging to the victim. It was a cassette tape. The confession you've written is adequate, but frankly, I, I sense a lack of remorse. And I, for one, would like to hear an apology. Charles Yo. deserves at least that much. I called it. Uh -huh. Now? Yes, Mr. McGill, now. Oh, he's gonna break the deal because of this. Okay. Okay. Goes both ways, doesn't it? All right, then. On to the matter of restitution, Mr. McGill. According to your agreement, you have two weeks to pay your brother back. I would like to pay up now, if I may. You may. The amount is $321. Howard, Chuck. I'm putting you both on notice regarding the bar hearing. First thing, I'm filing a motion to suppress that tape. The tape that Jimmy destroyed, you mean? How about we stop with the games? There's no way there isn't a duplicate. Really? True. Of course there is. You knew Jimmy was going to break in. You wanted him to. The Bar Association standard of proof is far more lenient than what you're used to. And that's diabolical. He couldn't use it in court, but he can use it in a bar hearing and even... Jimmy said it, he knows most of those guys, right, that are going to be handling the case. And Chuck made most of their careers, so that's just not fair, bro. Motions aside, that tape will be played. Chuck? Yeah. See you, Kim. What? Oh, they... Bingo. They have a plan. Ooh! No, I like that. Okay. Now, they look like a team here. They look like a team here, man. So, okay. I did. Is that it? 
I did find it weird that they actually, uh, right, accepted that that deal because right he was he needed to confess to everything and the, a felony would be put on record and in front of the bar association and he's probably gonna get this part but looks like they thought it through and apparently her finding out that they have the original tape there's gonna be some right gray area in the law book that's gonna i don't know somehow work to their benefit because apparently they do indeed have a plan they didn't just wing it they didn't come unprepared and looks like chuck as smug as he is isn't the smartest in the room after all right he's underestimating them thinking he has them fully boxed in but apparently they have a plan and i'm here for it <laughs> that being said i ain't gonna applaud this that much i really enjoyed this episode hope you enjoyed the reaction and i'll see you in the next one stay safe love you enjoy and bye